Hi guys, welcome back to another hashtag a career in tech video and in this video I will be explaining my career up until this point um, or my well yeah my career up until this point and what I currently do at McLaren. So if you haven't seen already, I'll be drop I've dropped another video with my friend Charlie um, going through these interview questions and I thought I would kind of interview myself on these questions to give you guys a brief experience of my career up until this point and what I'm doing, what I'm currently earning and what I'm planning on doing and the progression in that and also to give some sort of um, insight into how to get into the auto in automotive industry and how I did it. So skipping the background because obviously I met myself, uh, I studied, so in sixth form for A-levels I studied maths, business studies, Cisco, Welsh Baccalaureate and IT, if I didn't mention that. So we did five sort of A-levels or AS levels and then four A-levels. Welsh Baccalaureate was compulsory. I did maths because my uncle told me that maths would open up a lot of doors and I definitely think that's true. I did business studies because I was very business minded uh, in terms of I love that sort of the business side of things instead of startups and understanding how to grow a business and obviously then IT and Cisco was my main thing because uh, Cisco was networking so I'm at CCNA certified in a few things and um, yeah just sort of learn all the, all the network side of things in terms of switches and routers and how all that that works in, in infrastructure. After A-levels I went to university so my first choice of university was Cardiff, my second choice was Swansea mainly being because they were close to home and they offered the courses that I wanted to do which was computer science and the modules inside the, the sort of uh, degree were interesting to me. In terms of university being uh, how I sort of received it, it, I was very good theoretically but because of no previous coding development I kind of sucked on that front but I did learn um, slowly but surely and in terms of how it's kind of re reflecting on it and how it's helped me in my career, it definitely helps you understand the fundamentals and like I said, the theory behind it. But in terms of actual development, that is very self-taught. And that's what I've learned over the past four years is that you, you can't really teach someone to code. Coding comes from the more work and more effort you put into coding, the more you learn. And at university, no matter how hard they try and teach you to code, it's all down to you to, t to take it away and learn it yourself. In terms of the theory, it was very useful, but again, uh, a lot of the things we'll never probably use again, like when we did algorithms and data structures and all this sort of stuff, that's fundamental to understand, but realistically, I'm not going to go and use the big O notation anywhere else because I'm not that kind of developer. I'm not looking into things that in depth, and some people might be, but that's not the case for probably a lot of people who end up doing computer science. If you're a hardcore developer, that stuff will matter at some point, but if you're not, then you know it kind of just goes over your head. I finished university with a f uh, with a, a first, so I was pretty lucky. Honestly, I when I went to university, I'd never think I'd get anything more than two one, but I, I did work my ass off, especially in the final year. Um, I put a lot of hours in, and I managed to secure the the highest grade. Um, so I did a, a bachelor's in computer science, whether you're in industry, and I didn't actually do any specialism in anything either. In terms of advice to others, do I think it's a good thing to go to university? Personally, I would say yes, it is good to go to university. I still think the certification holds value. And if you want to progress your career, a lot of places will look at if you have a degree and a good degree. And I also do believe in going to the correct university for your course. A lot of people will say that there's no such thing as a crap and good university, but there is, in my opinion, and probably the opinion of the Russell groups and how they rank them. So I would definitely say if you're considering going to university, Pick a course that's going to help you um, possibly diverse into a few different areas and also pick a university that's reputable and will provide you good, well, I, I guess a good education, um, education, if not at least a good uh, look on your CV. In terms of everyone, I wouldn't say it's necessary to go to university to get to, to, get to a high level. I definitely think if you self-teach or go for apprenticeships, you could definitely earn more than someone who actually goes out and gets a degree. It's all about how you work and your ambition. Um, like I said, a degree might help you maybe get work abroad or if you want to do certain things in your life it might unlock those doors for you but I definitely think at a certain point doing an apprenticeship and self-teaching and, and really working hard will also unlock those doors for you although it might be a bit more difficult at the end of the day as long as you work hard you'll be able to get to the same level.
terms of if I did an internship, which is the next question, I did do an internship. I did an internship with Panasonic as an IoT assistant. Um, was a very, very valuable experience. I went to Japan, I went to Amsterdam. Um, I learned a lot about IoT uh, development, etc., etc. And I won't talk too much on that because I have a video on my entire internship, which I'll link either here or in the in the comments below. Um, so yeah, check out that video uh, if you want to know more about my internship. Because I'll go do go into quite a lot of depth in that. So obviously my career hasn't been that long. I've only been working for about a year and a half. I will quickly explain that prior to leaving uni, I did actually secure a graduate role with McLaren in the December. Uh, and then in March, when COVID hit after January, I was made redundant before I even started. So I did leave uni without a role. I was then looking around for roles in Cardiff. I got in contact with a recruiter. And that's when I went to my first ServiceNow partner, which was Flyform. And that's where I worked for the first 10 months of my career. So overall, it was a good experience. Like I said, ServiceNow was very new to me. So for the first three months, I was really enjoying learning the system and understanding the, the capabilities of it and you know, upskilling myself, learning as much as I can, uh, getting certified in certain areas. The most important thing when you're encountering something new is to spend a lot of time and dedication learning it. And that's exactly what I did for the first three months on top of obviously working. So I would say that for the first six months of Flyform, it was very interesting work. I did a lot. I, you know, I, I even worked outside of hours on my own to um, accomplish some certifications and understand the platform better. And after the six months, it kind of started getting a bit stale. Uh, the only reason I say that is because um, the work we did was a lot of uh, ad hoc work, I guess. So we would be dealing with incidents and requests. Um, which was, is part of ITSM management and we would also be doing minor enhancements so that's very slight configurations or small things to do to the platform to improve automation or self-service or, or building small new processes to the system and after a while uh, it did get a bit stale because I really wanted to start building and architecting entire processes myself and basically start going on projects uh, because of the sort of role I was in I was very much needed on a managed service so I ended up uh, con getting into contact with some recruiters and stuff and looking for roles elsewhere where I could progress myself because at the end of the day I think at, at that point in time they really needed people on that sort of desk and I wasn't really sure how long it would take me to progress and the timelines I was given weren't satisfactory to where I wanted to be so um, I just decided to look elsewhere and see if I could start getting the projects earlier. Uh, just quickly on that as well, whilst I was at the company, it's no, uh, I was earning about mid twenties uh, in salary wise. So I would say it's very, it was, it was a good um, start to the whole career, and that was my sort of first salary. When I was at Panasonic, I was on eighteen um, thousand pounds, uh, but there was a lot of perks and benefits uh, additional when I was at Panasonic, like in the internship with travel and stuff. At Flyform, obviously, I got to work from home for the whole year, so there wasn't any additional expense. So that was great as well. Um, yeah, I guess that's important to know. So that brings me on to my next role, which was actually at McLaren. So I am currently an ITSM analyst at McLaren. Uh, I still work in ServiceNow. So McLaren implemented a ServiceNow uh, instance about a year and a half ago. And I, and I basically govern and develop on the instance. So everything I do is ServiceNow related. So whether that's looking at working with BA to get new processes into the system, whether that's developing new uh, workflows or architecting new workflows, dynamic workflows and other automation and processes into the system. That's exactly what I do. And that's why I'm kind of really enjoying the projects here at, this, at the moment, because it's very much we have this we want to do. And I go away and architect and build it all from from scratch uh, on the system. And you get a lot of fulfillment when you've kind of come out with a solution. And I wasn't getting that in my previous role because I was basically fixing other broken things or very, doing additional development on top of something that was, which was already created. In terms of day to day, it's very much, you know, I have a list of enhancements or, or things I need to build for the system. So it's all been prioritized and reviewed and gone through a process. And then I basically pick it up uh, in due course, get it ready, get it built, get it tested and move it all from development to production, as well as providing any applicant support there. So the exciting products I've done since I've moved here are moving all of HR from SharePoint to ServiceNow. That was a really interesting project. I built a really interesting dynamic workflow. I've also been doing a lot of other automation and now looking into self-service and how to make the platform as you know, as easy and as good as a user experience as I possibly can. There are quite a few more interesting projects which are upcoming as well, um, which would be 
you know, again, quite a few bit of development to the platform to make it work how I want to, to, you know, everything from the whole automation side of notifying users to allowing uh, the people who want these processes and built to manage them themselves without having to talk to me, which is, again, it's, it's very great because it means that when I build stuff, they can go ahead and do it themselves and manage it themselves without having to touch any of the code. So everything I build, I like to build it robust, uh, scalable, and obviously make it as easy as possible to develop on the future or if anyone wants to manage it themselves, they can and understandable. And a lot of people obviously want low code environments. So I try and build things that when it's done, if it needs any amending or additional changes, or uh, I guess like the whole dynamic part of things, it's all done through fields, so it's very easy to change. Just to finish then, uh, whilst I'm at McLaren, I am on mid 30s, so it wasn't a huge jump from my previous role, but it was considerable. And at the time, obviously, I always wanted to dive into the automotive industry. As you guys know, I'm a massive petrol head, so being here is great. Um, and yeah, it, it, that was the main thing for me. I really want to be in the automotive industry and see how it is. And working at a supercar luxury brand like McLaren is really, you know, aligned with my ethos and it's really enjoyable. And, you know, working with the people I work with and doing the projects and seeing it, it, it being used and utilized with the company, that's also been very fulfilling to see. In terms of my plans for the next three years, um, after speaking to Charlie, which I'll again link up in here, I've kind of reassessed all my expectations of salary and where I want to be and I definitely think I can achieve things sooner especially with the way the market's going and how demand is how high demand is for service now right now I've spent a lot of time training myself up and you know dedicating myself to the craft so you know I'm definitely looking for opportunities um, I would love to stay in McLaren of course but I always say that you know you're number one at the end of the day you're working for a company, that company trying to reach their goals and you're trying to reach your goals. So if the company can't support you to reach the goals you want to reach, then, you know, somewhere else you'll have to, you'll have to find a way of doing that yourself, whether that, that is moving companies or going to somewhere that will be able to support you to do that. So in terms of the next three years, yes, I would love to see myself at McLaren, but, you know, if things don't fall into place, then I could see myself in a completely different role within the next few months it honestly completely depends on the company the work i'm doing and you know my salary and uh, how how i progress throughout that time in terms of titles i'm not really too fussed on titles i would just basically want to um, get into i just want to be valued and um i guess salaried at what i'm valued at so as long as i'm doing a good job and i'm saving the company money or making them a lot of money i kind of want in return you know, a percentage of that, and that to rise, and I guess even if if it was to fall, if my if my perform performance lacked, uh, that's what I'm about. Really, I'm all about making sure I add as much value as possible, doing a, a really good job of whatever I'm um, instructed to do, but also getting that return back. So if I am doing a really good job, if I am saving the my company money or making them a ton of money, then I would also want that to reflect on my my sort of progression. Um, I understand that there's limitations and restrictions, but to be honest, if I was doing a job and I feel like I progressed three times in a year and the company can also show that and I have evidence of it, I, I would expect to get a salary rise three times a year. That's just how it is. There's a big purchases. Personally, I would love to buy a BMW M3. Um, obviously, I've got a certain spec that I need to line up and that's the F80 M3. I'm a massive petrol head and that is one of my goals to get that because it's a four door sort of saloon family car that I really think that I could probably keep for the rest of my life. Um, so that's one of the big purchases. There's another one would be a house. That would be great if I could sort of get, you know, into the um, property ladder. Um, but again, that's all subject to how I play my cars within the next, you know, couple of years. If to do that within three years is, is quite a big ambition, but I like a good challenge and I, I like to set my ambitions high because I feel like if you don't set your goals high, then you won't be able to push yourself to reach them. So it's, it's definitely something that I would, uh, I, I like to do that. And even if you kind of don't reach those goals as quickly as you want, you'll be closer to reaching them because you gave yourself such a close timeline. Whereas if you gave yourself longer and you still didn't reach them, then you might not be where you want to be at that time. In terms of advice to graduates or anyone looking to make a career in tech, I would say that you definitely want to build experience in wherever you're going. So look at certifications, look at online courses, all these things, spend time and effort into learning the skill. Uh, this is very valuable to employers. Like if you can show, look, I went and spent some time on this, it might cost you a, you know, a bit of money, but the main thing is showing that you're committed, committed to learning. And 
if you want to move over to the tech space, for example, ServiceNow, I would say go and learn ServiceNow. You can go on the um, Now Learning, make an account, try and do some free courses, get a free instance, go on the developer site, get a free instance and learn the platform and try and, and then maybe do a couple of certifications, get an entry level role and then just build yourself up from there. My advice would always be look to learn. So I can only speak from um, at the service now perspective but since i've also in the automotive automotive industry i can say that if you're looking to get into this sort of industry there are a lot of it roles needed we've got infrastructure you know people who need to manage the network side of things all the people's computers um you know whether that's via you know microsoft and governing updates and patches and making sure everyone's computer is secure cyber security is a huge thing we need people in cyber to come in these companies and make sure that everything is being protected and governed properly um, we've got software engineering. When people in, are engineering these cars, Jaguar, Land Rover, Bentley, McLaren, we all need software engineers to come in and help us, you know, develop the software in the car and do QA and all that sort of stuff. There are a lot of roles in the automotive industry. I would just make sure you go online and check these websites, check, you know, McLaren, Bentley if you want to find a way in and, and then go for maybe more entry level roles into that sort of part, whether it's software engineering or quality assurance or testing and then as soon as you've got a bit, a couple of years experience, you could look to move over into an automotive sort of uh, company. In terms of everyone who's currently in tech, I would just say my biggest thing is talk to people in the industry, talk to your colleagues, talk to who are, who are the people that are doing the same role as you, because um, if you're getting under underpaid, then that's a huge thing. For some reason in this country, we don't like to talk about salaries. I can understand it to a certain extent. You don't need to give someone your exact salary, but as long as you give them a range that they can work with, then at least everyone knows whether they're getting paid the right amount of money for the work they're doing. Um, in terms of ServiceNow as well, I'd like to say that it's definitely a growing industry. If you want to make your, your sort of way to ServiceNow, look into Now Learning, look into the developer side of things, get some certifications, find an entry level role, or maybe even a, you might be able to get into a mid level role if you're a good developer. Um, the main thing is just learning your way around the um, sort of the, the the cloud platform and as soon as you've done that then it will be easy for you to develop it because at the end of the day it's all just javascript underneath it all and a massive database in terms of closing out um the one lesson i'd like to take away is that you know be ambitious you can basically you know i i honestly think that you can achieve anything you want to achieve if you want to earn a lot of money if you want to achieve a title if you want to work in a certain company make sure that you're every day you're taking steps to do that and you know make a plan and give yourself a time frame if you give yourself a time frame, you're more likely to achieve it way before the time frame even ends than if you don't give yourself a time frame because time is of the essence, I'd say. You know, time is everything for me. I always give myself a schedule. I'd be like, I want to do this by this time and then I get it done. And I always find personally that even if I think it to myself and say, you know, by 25, I want to be on like 70K, you might even hit that two or a year earlier. And that means that you've got an extra year to, you know, bounce on that and make another goal even even larger than that. And that's kind of what I want everyone to take away from this is that, you know, be ambitious, talk to people and learn. Like you, you, as the more you learn, the more you know, then the more you can kind of grow yourself um, in the direction you want without talking to people and, and you know, knowing that like you only know what you know. Right. So personally, I would I would try and, you know, get out of there, learn as much as possible, speak to as many people as possible, make sure that you're in the right headspace and uh, yeah, that's kind of my closing advice on this um, video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this sort of content. Um, comment any questions you have below. And if you're enjoying this sort of content with the whole new interview sort of style of things, then make sure to give it a subscribe because we've got a lot more interesting people coming on. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.